Hi everybody, we're here with Claire Kramer, who played Glory on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. How are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. Okay, so first question. Yes. Um, how did you like playing Glory? Well, I mean, I, I absolutely loved it. She was a huge, iconic character, obviously larger than life, mm -hmm. great dialogue, great storyline, great wardrobe. Um, what more can you ask for in a role? Right, okay. So for those unfamiliar with the character, how would you explain Glory to them? Well, Glory happened to be a hell god, mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> she was trapped on Earth, and in fact, shared a body with a character named Ben, and her season was really about her desire to get back home and to take whatever steps and measures necessary to achieve that goal, even if it meant an apocalypse and possibly killing Buffy. Oof. Yeah. yeah that's pretty dark. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I, I also... But ironically, she was not really a dark character. She's more known for her, you know, flippant uh, dialogue and, and fashion sense than anything else. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Memorable character, to say yes. the least. Yeah, okay. If you could go back and replay Glory, would you do it the same way, or would you try to take a different direction with the character, knowing what you know now? I mean, I would have done it... I, I think it's kind of impossible to answer that question. Part of the beauty of creating a performance is, you know, you're, as an actor, you're using your body as the vessel, the conduit for mm -hmm. the character. So I was at a certain place in my life. I was very young when I played that role. And... Uh, now I would definitely have a different perspective because I'm older, I've had more life experience, mm -hmm. different life experience, so it would be a different iteration mm -hmm. of Glory. But no, I wouldn't change anything about my performance. I, uh, although I have not rewatched myself because for me, I'm, that's just not that exciting. I was there in the moment, <laughs> yeah. I did it, so that's good enough. But I, I feel that, you know, I feel that everything was, was delivered in the right way for that moment in time. Okay, okay. Um, now, when you came on, there were already five seasons of the show. How did it feel coming on as like the new girl in there? And would you have any advice for someone trying to go into acting and like doing the day-to-day? -day? Okay, well, I came in, yeah, Glory was in the fifth season. Mm -hmm. And so the cast had already established themselves and their relationships and how they interacted for the four years or the four seasons prior. Um, but remember, Glory did not have many of her scenes with the main cast. She wasn't mm -hmm. with the Scooby gang a lot. She was with her minions mm -hmm. or she was like torturing Dawn or fighting Buffy. So it really, you know, everyone was extremely welcoming. I always say it was kind of akin to being the new kid in high school. Yeah. You know, switching high schools and, and you're the new kid on the block. Yeah, that, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, yeah. So something a little different from mm -hmm. the Buffy thing. I read that you were the original Wendy's girl. Oh my gosh, yes. A kid. <laughs> that is true. Recently, <laughs> there have been the sassy Wendy girls memes. Have you heard of this or have you seen this? I have, and I think it's hilarious. Uh, I grew up in Ohio, and that is where the corporate headquarters of Wendy's mm -hmm. is located. And so there was a pageant called Looking for Wendy, and I begged and pleaded <laughs> my parents to enter this pageant, and I won. I don't think my parents expected me to because I've never done a pageant before or since. Uh -huh. And uh, it was my job to dress up as Wendy, do all the appearances, do all the commercials, all the voice, you know. It was one of my first like big gigs yeah. as an actor. I think yeah. I was 13 when I got it. Um, and thankfully it was before yeah. social media and online, you know, yeah. was was available to post because there are not many pictures of Yeah, I think I only found like one or two. You found one? I That's found good one. on you. Yeah, I found one. We have the <laughs> I want to see what you found. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's funny. The dress got like, as I kind of grew over the years that I was Wendy, I was like, okay, I'm kind of, eventually I'm like, I'm getting too old for this outfit. <laughs> it was like, you know, the bloomers yeah. and the old fashioned blue and white striped dress. But it was a great job. It taught me a lot about, you know, being committed to something mm -hmm. and, and creating a character and also responsibilities as as an artist or an actor in, in the workforce. Yeah, know? just coming in and yeah. doing what you have just to do. Just knowing what you yeah. have to do, even maybe, you know, I had to sing with bands and, you know, I had to do some crazy stuff. There was like a cow milking contest one yeah. time. That I, it wasn't all glamour. Yeah, it was just, being, the, yeah. being the Wendy girl was not all glamour. <laughs> not like it is today. <laughs> not like it is today. <laughs> it's still not all glamour, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, are there any current projects that you're able to tell us about? Sure, I just finished directing my first feature documentary. Oh, wow. It's my directorial debut. 
It's a movie called Joyrider. It's the story of wheelchair athlete Andre Kylik, who is a double amputee. He lost both his legs in an accident in 2003, and he became this crazy endurance athlete. Um, and he spent the last three years trying to qualify for this race called Race Across America. This year he qualified, so we packed up our camera crew and followed him and his hand cycling crew from Oceanside, California to Annapolis, Maryland. He hand cycled there in 12 days. That's amazing. He only slept 90 minutes a night and he broke course records, world records, hand cycling records, basically every type of record you could break, he smashed to pieces. And I'm really excited to bring his story to the screen. That is amazing. That yeah. sounds like it's gonna be a really good film. Yes, it's amazing. We just wrapped about three weeks ago. So, uh, you know, I will be um, hoping to release that in theaters next summer. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Thanks. That sounds really Yeah, good. it's and really I, cool. Someone who does like a lot of sports, the sports stories like really, yeah. like, really inspiring. It, it's sports a sports stories. story, but it's also, you know, it's a, also a story about someone who has, we all have, you know, flaws and insecurities. Yeah. Well, he, you know, through his own actions, lost both his legs. So that is something that you have to mentally overcome, you know? And mm -hmm. so this, this story is relatable because he's, he's a real human. He's not just this like, oh, he's such an inspiration. I can't relate at all to him. You know, no, he's a normal flawed yeah. human being, you know, yeah. who has done amazing things. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Okay. Um, because this is a book blog, are there okay. any books you're currently reading or any books you would recommend to anyone listening or watching? Sure. Um, I am currently reading Heart of the Sea, mm -hmm. which is the real story about the whaling ship of that Moby Dick is based on. Okay. Um, it takes place in Nantucket, uh, and it is super interesting. I'm really enjoying it. Great read. Um, I am also, if some books I love, I can totally recommend this book called Cane River. It's an amazing, amazing book. Uh, I wish it would become a movie. It's four generations that mm -hmm. take uh, the stories to Savannah, Georgia, and it follows four generations of families. Okay. Um, it's amazing that it, I uh, have heard that the author will never relinquish the rights for it to be made into a oh, movie, and it would be so good. Um, another great author that I personally love is an author called P.D. James. She's a mystery author. She uh, wrote about Deglish, is her main detective character. He's mm -hmm. on the London Yard, and he is a PI, and it's just, he's. It's, she's an amazing writer and it's an amazing series of books um, she also wrote Children of Men which was not mm -hmm. obviously part of that series yeah. so she has written other things but those are a couple of my favorite authors let me think um, Middlesex is also a great book okay. if people have not read that that was pretty popular a couple years ago but it's kind of like waned um, it's it's a phenomenal story about a family that immigrates and I don't want to give anything away but yeah. you'll You'll see. Yeah, I'm more of a sci-fi myself. My favorite recently was Ernest Klein's uh, Ready Player One. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. Well, I'm dying to read that. Actually, that's on my list. Yeah, so. it's really good. And of course, I'm reading the Harry Potters to my kids right now. Yeah. Yeah. Those are... Those timeless. are fun. Yeah. And, and I feel like I can breeze through them, too, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's like a refreshing read. It's, a cl it's like the sorbet at yeah. a meal. It cleanses your palate, yeah, so then you can take on you another and, heavy yeah. book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so last question. Being here at Comic-Con mm -hmm. and seeing all the TV and going on, are there any guest spots you would ever like want to What? Comment, of course, to? yes. I would do anything on Game of Thrones <laughs> or Walking Dead. <laughs> anything. Okay. Extra, perfect. like, yeah, anything. All right, awesome. Just call me up. <laughs> I'll make sure to see, let anybody know. Yeah, just say, do. Just like, yeah. Oh. George R. R. Mark, yeah. Greg Nicotero, just let them know. Yeah. I'm fair, available. Fair. Claire's available and she'll do it. <laughs> hey, well, thank you very much. Yeah, it's absolutely. Been a really fun time hanging out. And yeah, thank you. you. Thank you.